Hello, and welcome to Peasant Level Craft, crafting for any budget. Is that pink I see? Pink means foam. Let's pass on the porta potty ground score. There we go. That'll save me a few copper pieces. No dwarf hitting a seam of pure gold has ever been happier than a peasant level crafter finding just a pile of free pink foam. So after a quick rinse, this is what we have. Now it's time to start working on the frame. Grab a piece of cardboard, single corrugated, any size will do. And just clean out some of whatever you want. I chose here to go for three walls. Trim it up, make it look good. And kind of just roughly cut out a shape. You can fine tune it later and get rid of any tape. Clean up your piece so it lays nice and flat. I think a door right about here. That's, yeah, that'll work out well. All right, now we have to start thinking about a base. I originally thought of making it square, but then I thought, no, this was a piece that jutted out and the rest of the castle was destroyed, leaving only the gate and just use some random cuts, clean it up a little, check the fit. So, so far, we're in one box and one construction site. Warm up your hot glue. And now, make sure your knife is nice and sharp and start cutting bricks. Don't worry about making things too all the same. Just kind of go for eyeball. With a kitchen knife of incredible sharpness, start cutting strips. Do a lot of this, more than you think you'll need. You will have use for bricks. Next, grab a container with some jagged rocks in. Put the bricks in and shake the whole thing vigorously. This will add texture to the bricks as the rocks press in in random fashions. Secure the walls to the base using hot glue. Now it's time to glue on bricks. If I had to do this all over again, I wouldn't have used all these extra steps. I would have just applied from the bottle directly to the piece. Um, it would save me, you know, cleaning, cleaning of brushes. It's, it's actually better. I did do this later. I chose to lay out my bricks in a rather haphazard way. Uh, this was a ruined tower and I figured that it had been hit by catapults and fireballs and it had settled and shifted. And so the once nice stonework was, was falling apart. Moving on to the front wall, I wanted to lay out the doorway by itself. Um, I figured that was a very strong place made of uh, strong stones. Um, it had to be in order to support the weight of the wall above it. So I laid it out separately with good sized bricks and I liked the way it turned out. Here I have the lid from an old shame meal container that my girlfriend and I had one drunken night. Uh, I'm gonna use it for mixing. Uh, what we're going to do is add glue, black paint, and a little bit of water and that'll help it seep into all the little cracks and then we're just going to go over the entire brickwork with this paint the interior too with the same mixture this will provide a nice base that you'll use later put the piece aside to dry i can't stress how important this is many times you will just want to plow ahead with work but at each step you have to allow things to dry completely or it'll just mess up now the first dry brush. This is my favorite part of the whole project. Just grab some gray paint, um, load up your brush, and then wipe most of it off. Then, with quick motions, apply it to the piece. This is my favorite part because this is when all the textures start popping out. This is where all the cracks start coming out. 
Now I'm going to shut up and let you hear the brushing goodness. Let it dry again, and then grab some off-white. Here I'm using antique parchment. Then you're going to very lightly dry brush, just as before, picking out the edges to really give the bricks some pop. Now it's time to texture the interior walls. Sand, black paint, and glue. This will hopefully give it a stucco-like texture. We'll see how it works out. My main interest is to hide the waves of the corrugation under the cardboard. That didn't turn out as well as I would have liked, but we're going to hide it behind some extra detail. We're gonna construct two ruined floors. Now these floors have been blown apart by the cataclysm that ruined the tower, but they have since been repaired by whatever little denizens lurk in the depths of the tower. It's been repaired in a haphazard and chaotic way, but it still serves its purpose. This brings us to our third expense of this project. The first two were free. They just were some gathering and a little saving, cardboard and foam. This cost me a dollar. I went to my local convenience store, uh, bought a cup of coffee, but instead of coffee, I filled it with coffee stirrers, uh, little, you know, wood coffee stirrers, and bought that and brought it home. So, so far in this craft, we're down a buck. With your fingers, just start breaking off sticks and gluing them to your support beams. Um, just go ahead and be crazy with it. There is no wrong way to do this. Earlier in the video, I talked to you about the importance of letting things dry completely. Um, that hasn't changed, but there is something you can do to fill the time, and that's scatter terrain. Little scatter terrain is just tiny bits of similarly themed stuff that you can place around a main structure. So I've made some little uh, fallen bricks with uh, support sticks sticking out, as if they were just little bits of rubble. And then you, on the board, you can put this around the main structure, and it helps it to kind of blend into the scene. So when things are drying, I'm generally working on scatter terrain, and here's some pieces. Now it's time to start basing the structure. Uh, this is going to go on the interior floor, and it, it adds some character to it. It, it adds rubble. Um, when I walk my dog, I generally have one of these little plastic containers that you can see on me. And when I see something, you know, about in the world, I just you know, reach down, scoop it up, put it in my pocket, and it becomes basing material. So, no cost. Now an intelligent person would have learned the lesson from the walls. Sadly, I am not that person and I applied with a brush again. You can see the exact moment where the light bulb goes off in my head and I'm like, just put the glue on the floor. Now just base with whatever found materials you have. The inspiration for this channel, Lucas from Bardscraft, uses uh, pine bark a lot, which he's dried in his oven. That looks great, but I live kind of in the city, and pine bark isn't as available to me. So I just use stuff from people's driveways and old aquariums and, you know, just stuff I find. Now we're gonna make some simple washes. These are the simplest washes you can make. It's just water, the color of your choice, and a little drop of dishwashing liquid. Mix it all together thoroughly and paint it up. For this project, I made two washes, a black wash for the bricks and a brownish wash for the wood floors. The brownish wash didn't turn out so well. 
I'm going to try a couple of things and hopefully when I come up with a better one, I will show you the recipe. I wanted to make something that looked like Agrax Earthshade from Citadel, but it looked nothing like it. It was, it was too muddy. Here I'm applying the black wash to the bricks on the outside. It'll fill in and kind of tone down any highlights that you have that are just too bright. Maybe there was a little too much paint on the brush. If you feel that you've dulled down what you've made too much, don't worry about it. You can always do what I did and just re-hit it with some white highlights. This time when I did the white highlights, I used a much bigger brush and it turned out very well. Uh, I'll keep you doing that in the future. And don't worry about layering too much paint. The richness and complexity of layers may not be readily apparent to the eye, but it always comes through and makes the piece more interesting. Here you can see me doing the inside and the walkways with the same parchment white. I thought it came out really well. I did add one last wash after I hit the, uh, the wood, but uh, the white tones really brought out a, a sense of age in the wood, and I liked the way it turned out a great deal. Now we come to a very fun part, the flocking. Here I use two different flocks, uh, both of which I did not pay for. Um, I borrowed from the kitchen. Uh, one is dried oregano and one is dried dill. Uh, the dill makes a very nice grass and the oregano, I thought, looked very much like ivy. So because I'm a peasant, I didn't put down any corrugation cladding. Uh, corrugation cladding would just be a thin strip of paper that you use to hide the rivels and edges of the corrugation. Instead, I just smacked on a bunch of glue, like a peasant, and sprinkled a whole bunch of dill over it. Uh, it turned out okay, but Wylock is very good at corrugation cladding, and if you want to see how he does it, go ahead and check out his channel at Wylock's Armory. This part was great. Uh, this actually worked out very well as ivy. I just smacked some glue on in places where I thought ivy would grow and sprinkled oregano over it. I used it also to hide the tops of the walls, uh, the corrugation that was revealed there. It worked out a lot better than the dill I used as grass. And I'm really, really happy with the way it looked. And so that's just about it, folks. If you want, you can paint a little yellow to bring out the oregano. I didn't on this because I liked the kind of dry look. Uh, make sure to seal it. You can either water down some PVA glue and water in a, uh, in a spray bottle and hit it with that, which is what I did. Or you can purchase for maybe a couple bucks, maybe two or three, uh, just some clear gloss sealant, uh, which also use well, also works well. Um, you can use a matte, you can use a semi-gloss, you can use a gloss. It depends on how shiny you want the thing to look. Um, this completes this build. Total cost, $1. Obviously, I'm not including all the sundry costs like paint and glue sticks and things like that. That's stuff I already had from the hobby. 
Um, when, I, when I say it's going to be a cheap craft, I'm going to talk about materials used. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you enjoy it. Please check out our sponsor, Bolter Bunny, at bolterbunny.com.